writing of general semantics. Now that last sentence, I'm not familiar with it, will be explained. Very briefly, it means how do we size up situations reasonably accurately or assess situations reasonably accurately and then how do we communicate effectively about them. But in the meantime, may I, with much pleasure and privilege, introduce you to Milton Dawson. <laughs> Thanks, Laurie. I would, I would like to start by thanking Laurie, Gavin, David, Pauline, and the rest of the members of the Australian Society for inviting me here. I'm glad to be here, and I hope you will be glad you came. I, to be more elaborate, I came into general semantics from seeing a star. It's called Canapos. It's a very beautiful star, and you can see it from this area. I can't see it from Montreal, so one of the highlights of me coming here is looking at my favorite constellation, the Southern Cross, and the, that star. That star, Canapos, was twinkling in so many different colors. I was fascinated. I was about Andrew's age. And I went to the library to read about stars and happened to come across Science and Sanity in the library. So that's how I started. So I would like to say that this session that we're doing, not to think of me as a presenter so much as a sharer. And the success of this day will depend on all of us sharing. I share what I have studied and practiced with you, and I hope you will share with me some of your skills and ideas and share with each other. So it's important for the success of the seminar that we share. Okay? I don't like to lecture. Actually, I don't like to talk. I prefer to, <coughs> prefer to listen. Because when we listen, we hear so much more. When we talk, we talking about what we already know or think we know, but when we listen, we are hearing more things. Okay? So this seminar is going to be how to be successful in whatever we do. Now, does anyone here think that they have not been successful? Anyone? Okay. Now, I would like to suggest to you that we are all successful. You have succeeded in coming here today. That's a measure of success. Do you agree? You might not think it's a big success, but most of what is involved in being successful, you did that today. The trouble is, you see, we, we don't think of ourselves as successful. We mostly think of ourselves as failing. When we fail, that makes a big impression on us. When we succeed, we don't realize that we have succeeded. We take it for granted. So you are all successful in the sense that you, you are here today. And the principles involved in that success is part of what we will be talking about here today. I woke up um, 2.30 this morning and um, more or less designed the seminar. One of the things that is important in terms of success is understanding our own rhythms, okay? how we go about things. Our own rhythm. Our own rhythms, how we go about things. Okay? I, for instance, could not be a co-leader or a co-facilitator in a workshop, it would be difficult for me because I, I think of my workshop, just think about it broadly, and then wait for ideas to come. They usually come the day before or the night before or sometimes a few hours before. Sometimes that's scary 
because I wonder sometimes, well, will the ideas come in time? Mm -hmm. But they usually come, so uh, I more or less accept that flow <coughs> and hope it will continue. I think I'll, the first time it happens is going to be a major, major change. <laughs> but, uh, it hasn't happened yet. So what we're talking about today here will involve how we can succeed in whatever we do, but recognizing how we go about this so that it doesn't just happen by chance, we can make it happen to a certain degree. See, one of the things with thinking about success is that we, we tend to think of big success. Right? And we don't think of the little successes on the way. And if we don't think of the little successes on the way, then when we have the big success, we might not even recognize it as success. So we need to be more aware of the little successes and not take for granted these little successes, not call them, well, many times we don't even call them anything. You, you came here today and you wouldn't call it a success. I call it a success. So, as I say, let's see where we go from here. A little bit about general semantics. General semantics is a system developed some years ago by Alfred Korzybski, who was so concerned and upset by what he saw happening in the First World War, the way people were treating each other very badly. Right? Very badly. And he wondered, how come we, was, we were so advanced technologically even at that time, and yet we were treating each other so badly. He wondered, how come? And he thought, well, there's a relationship between our technology and science and mathematics. And so he set about to study patients in psychiatric wards and also mathematicians and scientists in terms of how they approach things. You could think of the patients in the psychiatric wards as, let's call them, very bad evaluators, bad thinkers. And you think of science and mathematics as human thinking at its best in terms of predictability. So you don't see many bridges falling down. I drove from, I came, I usually drive to seminars, so I, <laughs> I couldn't drive here. But I came by plane. And you know, this is so surprising to me. I usually think about the Earth and the universe, but this is the first time I got a feel of the bigness of the Earth, and at the same time, the smallness of the Earth. Traveling for 14 hours from Honolulu to here at over 500 miles an hour. Can you use kilometers here? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, about 800 kilometers an hour. Traveling all that distance and still not arriving where we set out to arrive. I got a feel of the size of the Earth, the bigness of the Earth. And then at the same time, a feel of the smallness of the Earth. Because the nearest star to us, Alpha Centauri, is four light years away. Light travels at 186,000 miles per second, around 31 million seconds in a year. So you can get a feel of how far that star is <coughs> from us. Very far. So the Earth is big in terms of a certain reference point, and the Earth is small in terms of another reference point. So is the Earth big or small? Depends on your reference point. Are you successful or not? Depends on how you measure success. A 
about general semantics some more because there's, there's no end to what we can say about general semantics. We just have to stop somewhere because we don't have enough time. General semantics came about, as I mentioned, when Korzybski thought we were too, so advanced technologically and yet not behaving well with each other. And in studying science and mathematics, he recognized that there was a certain method and approach in those two systems. And he thought, if we can copy, study the methods of science and mathematics, and then copy and apply those methods to our everyday life, then we will have a measure of success compared to the success of science and mathematics in our lives. Without science and mathematics, I couldn't be here today. It would be a very, very long time to travel by, well, even if I, I couldn't swim. Yeah? If I went by boat or, or um, ship, it would still involve science and mathematics. So there is a lot of what we do that involves science and mathematics, which again we take for granted. So if we study science and mathematics and apply those methods to our everyday lives, we can have a certain measure of success. Another thing that you can think about Science and Sanity, which is the book called It's Road to Illustrate His System, is that it's about thinking <coughs> about how we think, thinking about how we think, evaluating our evaluations. We're constantly evaluating, we're constantly thinking, but we seldom think about how we think. And one of the things that's important about thinking how we think this. I hope you will be able to see this. How we think is very closely related to how we feel. So I make this correct. This arrow going both ways. We think a certain way as a result of feeling a certain way. And when we feel a certain way, we will think a certain way. Now, if it stopped there, it would be a big problem. Yeah? The major problem is that our thinking and feeling is related to certain attitudes. And again, Arrows going both ways. If we have certain attitudes, if we think and feel a certain way and have certain attitudes, we will behave. We will act a certain way. And we will relate to each other in a certain way. And we will also relate to ourselves in a certain way. And then, all of this is in relationship to our environment. And by environment, I mean here, the world around us. And except for other people, the environment doesn't care. It's very important to remember this. The environment doesn't care. When the earth feels like quaking, it doesn't matter who is there. The earthquake happens, and you either get out of the way, or you're finished. When the earth feels like erupting, and you have a volcano, it doesn't care. A hurricane comes when it comes, it doesn't care. 
So it's up to us to match what we think and feel and do and study whether the environment agrees with us. That's very important. We study what goes on, we study what we're doing, and we see if we can get a match. Okay? The match won't be exact, but if it's close enough, we can manage. So that was just a little sideline about thinking about how we think. And another aspect of general semantics has to do with what we call time binding. Does anyone here have a cell phone? Cell phone? Computer? A car? We used to call them my bar, <laughs> Radio? Television? Okay. Now, if you look at radio, television, car, or cell phones, they didn't start there. Start from simpler beginnings, and somebody took this idea or these ideas and built on these ideas. So, something happened at a certain time, let's call it time one, and we get certain information about this, whether through lectures, books, or whatever, and we can build on that. And somebody else come and look at what we have built through our books or lectures or whatever we say or so on, and they can build on that. And this is one of the, the ways Kozitsky described the human beings as time binders. We can take the ideas, the opinions, the words, the behaviors of others, and we can build on that. And on building on that, we have a building like this. We didn't start out with a building like this. We might have started out in caves. And somebody came along and said, well, sometimes the cave collapses. Maybe we can find something that is more durable. And we may build a log cabin. Somebody else comes along and look at the log cabin and say maybe we can do better than that and they build something else. And so we go from simple beginnings to more advanced beginnings. And I call them beginnings because it starts there and somebody will develop on that. Think of a, a dog or a cat. They more or less behave as they have seen their mothers and fathers, let's call them mothers and fathers, behave. And they don't go much further than that. So as human beings, we have the ability to go on and on and on. And we can call that, as Kozic can be, time binding. Now as time binders, we can build better bombs. Agree? And we can build better missiles, and better cell phones, and better computers, better television sets. But it's important for general semantics that we learn how to build better relationships. Better relationships in the sense of not just how you and I relate to each other, but relationships with ourselves, relationships with others, relationships with the world around us. So when I use relationships here, I mean any kind of relationship you can think about. Anything that involves more than one, you can think of as a relationship. And as long as we're alive, and sensing things, then we have relationship. Okay. Any questions? Any? inability to hear what I'm saying because I was warned about your strange accent. <laughs> but 
because I also have an accent. So, so Milton, are you saying that um, that uh, a better relationship also um, could be could be done by if we don't sit and accept uh, a relationship at this time at this level, mm -hmm. we should also work on that relationship to improve just the same way as as you improve a better building. Yes. A better, uh, Yes, because we can time bind in terms of relationships also. Time bind in, in every, in every yes. sense, in, yes. every, in every yes. aspect of uh, yes. one's yes. life. Yes. Which way did you do that, Milton? Your manner should be bigger and bigger as long as you're going. Yeah. Say it again. Your manner, your relationship should be bigger and bigger as long as you're going. Yeah. Yes, time bind yes. yes. An improvement. We're looking for improvement. Could, right? you, could, you could just say it could get better. Yeah, it or could. it could get worse. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it could get better or worse. But using general semantics, it really should be should be uh, better, right? It could be, as you said. <laughs> it's very likely, it's highly probable that it will get better. And it's important to remember that general semantics won't do anything for you. You have to use general semantics. It won't do anything for you. It doesn't do anything for anyone. You have to use it. If you have a tool and it's just sitting there, then you can't build anything with it. You can't do anything with it. If you have a tool and you use it, then you can accomplish things. So think of general semantics as a tool to help us do things better. In simple terms, a tool we can use to help us do things better. Now, if um, I, have an, I have allergies, so when I hear somebody coughing, I'm wondering if there's an allergic reaction. Yeah? So does anyone have a lozenge or what you call it, um, anything for the throat that might help? No? Don't yeah. worry, I've been like this all tonight. <laughs> yeah? Okay. Okay. Okay, so some key terms. First one is variable. Variable. Right? Structure. And function self awareness and evaluating variable structure function self-awareness, evaluating. Now, this is not all, eh? so I'll put etc. there. But for today, in terms of time, in terms of time, we, we will stop it there. Eh? Now, I'll just take a little detour here. I want to especially mention how pleased I am to see Andrew here. Because the, the future of the species depends on the children, and what they do depends a great deal on what we do. <coughs> there was an old rock and roll song about teach the children well. So what's going on in the world depends a great deal on what the children are learning from what we see, what they see, what they hear, what we do. They're learning. Right? So, welcome, Andrew. And I think we, all of us should give Andrew an applause. Okay. One of the things I like to do is, um, if I just talk to you about things, you hear it. It doesn't make much an impression. But if you do something, then you're likely to feel that it's part of you. Yeah? So what I would like to do now is ask you to 
Think of the term variable. Think of yourself. And your name, let's, um, let's use the name Andrew, okay? Now here we have a name, and I would ask Andrew if you are the same person you were five years ago. Yes, Andrew. Okay. Could you elaborate? Andrew said yes and no. Could you elaborate a little? So you are the same in certain respects and not the same in other respects, okay? In general semantics, we talk about this in terms of indexing and, and dating, okay? So Andrew at time one, five years, two years, yesterday, is not Andrew at time two. Slight difference, but many times little differences make a difference. So, in terms of the variable, Andrew can think of himself as a variable. We all can think of ourselves as a variable. Would you agree? We think we are the same, but we are not the same. Some of us are fatter, some of us are smarter. We change. Can't be the same. Here's another way of thinking in terms of the variable. Suppose I write an equation y equals 3x. Okay? Now this is a Let's call it a relatively simple mathematical <coughs> statement. It says there's a relationship between y and x such that if you give a value to x, then you get y. So x is called the independent variable and y the dependent variable. You give x a value, and why it changes. Okay? So for instance, again this is just illustrating the notion of the variable. Let's say Pauline give x a value. Good. If x is 5, then y becomes 15. Give x a value? 10. 30. X a value? Two. This is a nice group because sometimes people give values like 1.346. <laughs> and then when they do that, I ask them to work it out themselves. <laughs> so here we see we have a relationship between x and y. You give x a value, somebody else gives another value. Now, what is y? Is y 15? Is y 15? Why is yeah. At the time when you give it the value of 5. Why is 3 years? Yeah. Is y 30? See? So y will depend on x. Yeah. And again, a lot of conflicts arise when we argue and we are convinced that y is 15. And you can think of y here as our ideas, or beliefs, or feelings about things. Right? And you can think of x as how we look at the situation, how we feel about the situation. Let's follow that. If you don't follow, tell me. You know, we can do other things to illustrate the point. But it's an important point. Another way of thinking of the variable is 
aspects of a situation which you can change to make a difference. That's okay? Yeah, sorry, can you say that again? Aspects. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Features, characteristics of a situation which you can change to make a difference. So, for instance, if you want your um, car to run properly, what are some variables involved in your running, your using of the cars? What are some variables? Hmm? Petrol, what else? Oil. Oil. Tuning, maintenance. Tuning, all of these things. So these are variables which if you change them in particular ways, it makes a difference in how the car runs. Yeah? Yeah. Um, no, no. If, uh, just coming back to your formula, if uh, you, uh, you know why and you don't know x, then, then y becomes the independent variable, isn't it? Yeah. And x becomes the variable. Yeah. Uh, so what we're looking at is the relationship. A relationship. And at times, again, y could be a function of z. Of, of z. Yeah. Right? Uh, so many times we have to work backwards, we come across a Y and we want to find out what it's related to. So is the idea of a variable okay with you? Anybody not clear about the variable? Don't feel shy about saying you're not clear, you know, because one of the things about general semantics, the principle of non allness None of us know all about anything. So don't feel embarrassed or shy to say, please explain some more. Uh, why don't we know uh, all about it? Yeah? Why is it not all about it? Why don't we know uh, all about something? Yeah, I'm getting, I'm getting echo, I'm not hearing. I'd just like you to explain non all people mm -hmm. uh, uh, as to why uh, you can't uh, know all about, all about anything. Because right. yeah. things change. So even if you thought you know all about something now, in terms of process and change, tomorrow you may not know. So don't be shy. If you don't understand the notion of the variable, then please say. And the reason I'm stressing that is that the chances of your succeeding in anything you do dependent on variables. So it's important that you understand the notion of the variable. Eh? So the way you're saying that it's success, it is a success, you can't hear today. Yeah. You're, you're, you're talking about a, some variable there. Variables that will help you move towards success. And we'll go into that later in terms of some little exercise I'll ask you to do. But it's important that you understand the tool, the notion of the variable as a tool. And we'll use the tool later on. A spreadsheet would be a good example of variables. You change one art and everything else changes. Yeah. yeah. So what you're warning uh, uh, toward that, that we try to look for variables that will impact on, on the final result that we're, we're, yeah. we want to That you, you can change, or if changed, can make a difference. So if you can anticipate these changes, then it can help you. Yeah. Well, you just made that a, a, we are looking at success pilot, you know, success pilot. Mm -hmm. you're, you're saying that what you would regard as a fact mm -hmm. depends on what degree of variables or of quantities you, you, you assign to, yeah. to this fact. Yeah. Or what you assign to success. And that, that depends is, on what you, what you see as a success. What you see, yes. It just depends on what, vari what degrees of variables you put on. That you've put in there. In your thinking. And your measure. What tool you use to measure. Yeah. Think of the word structure. One of the most important words you could ever think of. It's one of the few words in the English language 
that you can make a whole sentence with one word. Structure, structures, structure. This structure can structure material and create this structure. Follow that? Structure, structures, structures. Very important word. Okay. Um, I need a volunteer for this one. Volunteer. Nothing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Could you come up? Yes. Thanks. Now, could you come and stand beside me? Good. Would you walk towards that door? Go through the door with your eyes closed. Do I walk with my eyes closed from here? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very good. Now, if you just stay there, very good. Okay, if you stay there. No, just come back towards me, yeah? But to a great extent, we go through the universe with our eyes closed. <laughs> That's a bad line. <laughs> Is that it? No, you're not there yet. <laughs> um. No, I'm not. I'm stuck. No, she's not cheating. Very honest. This is the voice only. Yeah. Follow the voice. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. One of the thing, important thing about principles is that you can apply a principle anywhere. So what principle did you learn or what principle could you select? What principle could you design from that little experiment? Think of it in terms of success, in terms of getting towards the door, and success in terms of returning. What principle did you see there? So determination, despite the uh, obstacles, mm -hmm. she never gave up. Okay. And then followed, not just relying on her sight, but her hearing. Like it's so determination. We are likely to succeed. Remember, I don't say you will succeed. We are likely to succeed if we are highly determined and highly motivated. Okay? Be aware that the environment can change. Huh? Be aware that the environment can change. Yes. Like so we, Sunny could, she saw yeah. how to go, but the, the map changed when she came back. Right. So we have a variable there in terms of the environment. Okay? Hmm? Flexibility or being able to Flexibility. Yeah. Persistence. Distance. Persistence. Persistence, yes, we could relate that to determination. The awareness of change. Awareness of change. Change in terms of how you approach the situation. She walked differently, so there was a change there in terms of how she approached the goal. Yeah. So we've changed ourselves. All these are variables. Right? And think of all these as variables. Very. And all these are variables in terms of structuring the situation. So I want to introduce you to the word structure as a verb. We structure situations. And while I was having some nice proofs that Gavin prepared for me this morning, the idea came to me. Success 
And remember, you have to translate these very, what you call it, summary statements. Translate it so that it's more elaborate and more accurate. But it's the basic idea that's important. Success depends on our awareness of structures and how we structure our awareness. Our awareness of structures moving towards the door as the goal, the objective. We know that we are aiming for that. So we are aware of that structure. We are aware of certain structures here. And then structuring our awareness when she was coming back, by listening to my voice, a structure here, it helped her to decide how she go. In terms of all the people, volunteers who were standing here, she was structuring how she approached the situation by feeling around, right? She couldn't depend on her eyes anymore, so she felt around. So that's a different way of structuring her movement. Yeah? So I would like you from today, if, if all you go away with today is the notion of structure, to structure a situation, structure as a verb. If you go away today just with that, then I'll be satisfied. Structure as a verb. We are constantly structuring. Yeah? When we eat, there is structuring going on in terms of digestion. Right? We get certain things in, our system does certain things with it, and we get fatter or smaller as the case may be, or we stay healthy as the case may be. There's structuring going on in the system there. When we have a feeling about someone or something or some situation, there is, there is structuring going on there in terms of how we look at the situation, how we interpret, how we analyze. These are examples of structures. So it's important that you get a feel of that term, structure. Okay, let's go to function. If we go back to this equation, the mathematicians talk about it as y is a function of x. y is related to x in a particular way. Okay? So you can think of function as the relationship between variables. Okay? So I would ask you now to I'm going to invite you to form group of threes, okay? Group of threes, and the assignment is to think of something that you would like to be successful at. Anything, it could be just having a better relationship, it could be getting to be the chief executive of your workplace, it could be to be a better driver. Eh? Anything that you can think of as something you would like to succeed at. It doesn't have to be a great big project. It doesn't have to be the prime minister. Eh? Anything. So if you could form groups of three. Right now, just the next assignment. Next assignment, stay in your group, stay in your group. Yeah? The next assignment, next assignment, apply the notion of the variable to that particular area that you would like to succeed in. What are some of the components? What are some of the features, the characteristics, the things that if you change, that you're, if you're aware of, will make a difference. Look for some variables. 
Follow that? Okay, understand that? question. Now, let me tell you how I go about it now. Maybe tomorrow I'll change. But this is my response. <laughs> Think of where you're sitting now, right, in this room, okay? Now, where does this room end? At the walls. Okay, at the walls. Now, this room is part of a bigger structure. This building. Where does this building end? Okay. Now, if you imagine this, it's, there are some questions which we can ask because of the language we have, which we cannot answer because the knowledge is not there. So, if you ask where this room ends, you can determine what ends a room, and you say wall. Now suppose the universe, let's call this universe, okay? Not here, but in here, okay? Now suppose you said universe ended here. The next question would be, what's outside? what's outside? Because what I asked too, okay? But then you'll have to determine whether you would call this universe also, right? Because if you stop it here and say this is universe, then you'll have to decide what do you call this. So when I was thinking about it, I decided that everything is universe and it has no end because if it ended, you'd have to say, well, it stops here, and there's something else here. Then you'd have to give this something else another name, so I get out of that problem by calling everything universe. <coughs> everything universe. It's hard to imagine, and I've been trying to imagine that from I was your age. If we can't say it doesn't have any end, we can't say it has no end, and we can't say it has an end. We can't imagine. It's difficult to imagine. Okay? But it's a good thing to, in a sense, make us feel humble when we recognize the vastness and when we recognize <coughs> how much we don't know. Okay? So that is one answer. But you can work on it in terms of time binding. And if you come up with other answers, then you can tell your mother, contact. Because I'd love to hear. Yeah? Because I'd love to hear. Okay? Good. Anything else came up? Okay, let's, let's think of function. Remember that function has to do with the relationship, with, with the relationship between variables. But, um, I go back a little bit to structure. Have you visited, remember visiting a person's home that you have not been before? Eh? And you bounce your elbows on walls or hit your knees on the bathtub or some bathtubs are, are this high, some are low. You remember anything like that happening? I have a... Um, a VCR here which I brought, um, a videotape which I brought to show you something, a short film, nine minutes long. It doesn't work here, <laughs> yet. <laughs> Victor promises to, to fix that, to structure differently. Yeah? 
the important thing or one important thing about structure is that when we are not aware of the structures that we are in, we are likely to hurt ourselves. We cannot be as effective as we can be if we are unaware of the structures we are operating in and ourselves as a structure. And how structures change and the obstacles that we'll, we will encounter. So it's important to think in terms of structure and structuring. Without structures, we wouldn't be here. Without structuring, we wouldn't be here. I notice there are um, roundabouts and the intersections which we don't have in Montreal, maybe one in very big expressways. And I notice that structure, and it works incredibly <coughs> well, I think. Yeah? But then I have a fault that I found is that if I was a stranger here and decided to drive around, I would run into some of those big ones which is you know, almost the same level as the street. And on a wet, rainy night, it might not be easy to see that structure. So I would run over some of those structures. Yeah? So it's important for us, in terms of success, to acquaint ourselves with the structures we'll be operating in, which is our environment, people, time, and so on, and ourselves as structures or rhythms, or likes and dislikes, and so on, okay? So okay, here's the next, is that clear? Here's another assignment now. Again, in your groups of threes, you can be the same, I don't like to use the same, but for this purpose, let's say the same group of threes, or different if you want. And the invitation here now is for you to think of what you said you would like to succeed in, and think of it in terms of functions, things related to each other in that situation. For instance, think of function as if I ask you, your health is a function of? I'm actually weight. I'm actually yeah? All those are variables. Okay? Safe driving is a function of? A witness. <laughs> Having, having, having a moving car that you know how to operate. Mm -hmm. What else? Having a good dog instructor. Yeah. Having a good dog what the other driver does. Yeah. Yeah. Your um, success in school is a function of? You can't be wrong. You can't be wrong. Intelligence, yeah, and how you apply your intelligence, yeah. Mm -hmm. So your assignment here now is to, in your groups, think of what you would like to succeed at and some of the functions there. What variables and how they relate. If I want to be a success at, then I have to do so and so and so and so. So you're going to find that it's related to the variables, right? And your success will be a function of these variables and how you apply them. Okay, so back to your group of threes, please. These experiments, and I call them experiments, simply because I don't know how they'll turn out, and you don't know either. But a very important thing about experiment is that you cannot fail. You cannot fail when you have an attitude of experimenting, regardless what it is you're doing. If you take an approach, the scientific approach of experimenting, you cannot fail. How come? Anything that happens gives you some information anything that happens. So you set out to achieve something, you might not achieve that, but whatever happens gives you information about how things work. When things don't work the way we expect them to work, you can think of it as universe saying, 
I work other ways too. Not just your way. Hmm? I work other ways too. That's what the universe, the message you can take from universe when things don't go the way we would like them to go. Which means then we have to structure differently. Look for more variables. Look for more interconnections and interrelationships. Okay? So these exercises, experiments, is a way for, to, I hope that you'll get a feel of the tools. It's not to solve the problems here. It's to get a feel of the tools that you can use later on. She said that if I run a course, she's a, she's a minister. Mm -hmm. She said, if I run a course in New York and I get three people, Mm -hmm. The message to me is, I'm not meant to run courses in New York. <laughs> um, now, how far do you say, okay, I then go on to another city, I then advertise to with me, or do you restructure for New York? Um, I mean, there might be there might be a situation where you're not you're not giving up, you don't give up, right. but to say this area is not for me. Mm -hmm. So it's meeting defeat very in small yeah. uh, words. It's yeah. admitting that, um, okay, my course is not for these people in this area. At this time? At this time, yeah. So what do we do when we come across that situation? <laughs> well, if you just come across it once, it depends on determination, right. depends on motivation, depends on persistence. You can decide whether you will try again, structure the situation differently, advertise differently and try again. If you keep trying and then you discover a pattern of uh, what you would call failure, then you have to take some information from that right. to help you in another situation. Right. Yeah, well, she, she relies very much on what the universe tells her. Mm -hmm. That's what you were hinting at when you yeah. spoke over there. Yeah. But uh, yeah. there's got to be a balance between those and yeah. determination and motivation. And, and so. remember, the universe is constantly operating, changing, functioning differently. Right. So if we just go into the situation once and say, okay, that's it, then in general semantics we would call it an identification. Right. You identify that moment as related to all, all times, right. all moments, all situations. It's not like having one failure and saying, oh, I have a failure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? Okay. Thank you, Milton. Okay. So you're saying, Milton, that while we may not have our group of three here, mm -hmm. determine any kind of solution for any one of the three of us, it's important to get the feel. Yeah. To get the feel. Of the there is something in playing around with structure and variables of function. Yes, to get the feel of the tool, it's not to solve the problems here, but to get the feel of the tool so you can apply it elsewhere. Right. Okay. But as I mentioned, when you have a principle, principles are very good practical things in that you apply them in anywhere, wherever you are. So you get the feel of it here to apply it elsewhere. Any other question before we go on to the next experiment? Um, I'm not sure I understand the difference between the exercise we did before, mm -hmm. like finding the variables, and the exercise we did here, and the exercise we did now, which was the function. function. It's, it's applying the notion of the variables in terms of how they interrelate. Remember I asked, your head is a function of? Yeah. So in a sense, it's applying the notion of the variable to the situation. We firstly decided on what the variables that you could come up with. So if the variable was going to the gym, mm -hmm. what would the function be? To re re recognize that going to the gym is that your health is a function of going to the gym. Yeah. So it's to remember that relationship between going to the gym and what it is you're trying to achieve. So going to the gym is a variable, it's a component of the situation, and to make the connection between the component and the goal, that's what I mean by the function. This is related to that. 
Okay? Because the, the, the notion of a function is simply saying this is related to that. Are you saying that the more we become aware of mm -hmm. a structure function of variables, mm -hmm. the more we become aware of that and the more we seek mm -hmm. to apply that principle mm -hmm. in whatever circumstances we're in yeah. from day to day, mm -hmm. the more uh, the, the more skill we will develop in yeah. handling the more likelihood of success, the more chances we give ourselves to succeed in what we're doing. Yeah? Would you say that uh, the two things, uh, the variable and function, mm -hmm. uh, is really, uh, in, a, in a sense, a unit? That there's, no, there's no relationship, there's no uh, uh, variable without function, and there's no function without it. Yeah. So it's uh, kind of together. Yeah. In mathematics, they, they go together, yeah. but what we're trying to do here is to recognize that V can apply the notion it's of a, the It's a linguistic thing to, to distinguish between a function and... and, and yeah, yeah. yeah. So it, it, in language, it, it, we make a distinction. Language, yeah, 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 exactly. And the idea is to apply the notion of the variable to the situations and to recognize that we're doing that. It's very important to be, recognize that we can do that. We have the power to do that. Okay? Somebody down there had to say. Yes, I wonder in, to what extent the world of mathematics has something to say here. Mm -hmm. In terms of thinking of these things more as a network, where there are many uh, items that, that are uh, variables. Mm -hmm. In terms of health, these items obviously are things like exercise, sleep, diet, and uh, taking drugs, legitimate and otherwise, and uh, stress and so forth, rather than thinking that um, simply health is a function of diet, it's a health a function of sleep and so forth, each of these things is a function of many variables. Yeah. For example, if you're going to, rather than just saying that your gym is good for health, mm -hmm. uh, there's a point at which it can work the other way, you know, mm -hmm. you can spend too much of your time yeah. exercising and not yeah. sleeping, etc. Yeah. Yeah. Too much exercise, not yeah. enough food, or vice yeah. versa. Right. So to know that if you're going to spend more time in the gym, mm -hmm. you've also probably got to adjust your diet, yeah. you've got to adjust yeah. your sleep. Right. You know, if you if because you're going, going to the gym as a variable, you can do too much going, as you say, and it can be affect you adversely if you go to the gym too much. Because I do, the, I, I go to the gym. I've been exercising since I was um, 14 and never stopped. Yes. So I know that there are some fellows who go to the gym every day. And all the couple. So the, the going to the gym you can think of as a variable. And how you go to the gym, again, is another distinction you make on that variable. Yeah? I was with my brother in law the other day, and we saw a fellow with enormous muscles. He's hardly mm. fitting his shirt, you know. <laughs> and I said, Oh, that's, isn't that fabulous body, you know? Yeah. And he laughed and said, Oh, no, that's not from exercise, that's from little white pills. <laughs> So it's a very important point to exercise your application of the variable and to recognize the distinctions so that you can go to the gym as a variable in terms of your health and how often you go to the gym, again, is making another distinction on that variable. That's clear? I don't know, I'm not sure, how do you di differentiate the meaning between these three, uh, variable structure and function? Mm -hmm. uh, do, we, do we have a, an intuitive kind of feel for them, or do we have to have a, a clear sort of cognitive map of them? In terms of the words, we don't usually use those terms. So I wouldn't say that we have an instinctive feel for the terms, but as human beings, we do apply that without recognizing it. As I mentioned before, we do structure situations. When you describe something, when you imagine what might happen in a situation, that's structuring, as I, as I understand it, or as I present it to you. That's structuring, but we don't think of structuring, the word structuring, as a principle that we can use. We just do these things automatically. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. 
When we have the word, when we have the principle, then we can consciously use it. As I was mentioning to, we were discussing this morning or uh, last night with Gavin, if somebody gave you a television set as a present and they hid it in the attic or in the basement, when you came back from holidays, they would come and then say, um, I have a present for you. But you come back from holidays and they went on holidays. So now the television is in the attic or the basement and you don't know it's there. Can you use it? Will it be of any use to you? So you have to know that it's there. And that's part of what happens with these tools that we have. If we are aware of the tool of, say, variable structuring functions, we can use it. But we can be using these, let's call them, tools in quotation without being aware of them as tools. So for instance, if you came into the home and you've never seen a television set that looked like that again, you were in the attic and you saw this set, but it's quite different from other television sets you have seen. Eh? So you don't know that it's a television set. So you use it to um, put your books on, Right? Or you use it to, to bar the door if you're afraid of robbers. <laughs> so you're not using it as a television set because you don't know it as a television set. You just know it as a thing. So in a similar manner, we do all of these things, but we're not aware of them as tools. And so part of this experiment exercise today is to become aware of them as tools so that we can use them with more advantage to us. Understand? Is it clear? Yeah. The, the, my question now, I suppose this is from my teaching point of view. Mm. I, I wonder if saying a person, I mean, if this is applied to me, mm -hmm. I know that I'm going to talk about structure, function, and variables mm -hmm. for the rest of the next 10 weeks. Mm -hmm. So I know that there's some following up exposure on me mm -hmm. to becoming aware of the use of those three terms as two. Mm -hmm. But supposing someone's here and they're going to be here today mm -hmm. and they won't return to another dosage, mm -hmm. and there will be no reinforcement after today. Mm -hmm. I just wonder whether or not to what extent can they value? Can they get value from this? It depends on their. It depends. It's a function of. Yeah? Function of. How much you use it? And I can't make you use it. Yeah? I can't make you use these tools. So you have to motivate yourself, you have to want to use it, you have to be determined, you have to be persistent, because it doesn't just come like that. Okay? So you have to use it. As I mentioned before, general semantics or any tool doesn't do anything for us. We have to use it. So you will go away and you will use it, and someone else will go away and they will hear these terms and not use it. It won't help them much. They may be able to talk to other people in terms of variable structures and functions and talk about it, but they haven't used it. So it's important that we use these tools. Okay? It's clear? You can't, you can't make people use the tools that you share with them. Okay? They have to want to use the tools themselves. We can only say, I'm sharing this tool with you, and I hope you will use it, but you can't make them use it. We are constantly exposed to a particular way of thinking, constantly, from the moment we're born. And if we hear of a new way of looking at a situation, and we don't avail ourselves of that opportunity, then we lose the chances of um, getting any better. We will fall back again into 
what is com constant impinging on us. I usually put it like this. You could just draw yourself on the paper like this. And draw some arrows all around. Yeah? And I'll elaborate on much of this in the, um, the weekend seminar. Because today we can only skim the surface of things. So here you are, and you're constantly bombarded by particular ways of thinking from television, right? from advertisements, from courses you take, from books you read. And this particular way of thinking, most of the time, is what we call, let's call it an Aristotelian, and let's call it old type thinking. It's not that old type thinking is bad. We need other ways of thinking about situations. It's not that old time structuring is bad, but many times when they don't work, we need a new way of structuring the situation. So if we don't avail ourselves of the opportunity to, to speak with other people who have been practicing and thinking some other way, then this is constantly working on us and in us. Understand? So it's important that we practice and um, communicate with others around. And you have them there, the Australian Society for General Semantics. You have them there, okay? And even though you might come to a day like today and you know about something still drops off. Yeah. I mean, even though we say, oh, yeah, that doesn't make a course. Yeah. We do nothing. I mean, we're probably yeah. going to do like that. Yeah. But something still stays. Yeah. yeah. So it's still beneficial. Yeah. Um, you know, people say, well, we're using this and this and this, not me. Yeah. And subconsciously, because it's a factor in your life, but you don't realise it. Yeah. Yes, that's, that's true. So we've been using it in some way, and some of us to greater extent than others. But as you mentioned, it's difficult to leave here and something doesn't stick. Yeah? Would, would you say, uh, uh, Milton, that, that we are uh, creating uh, uh, theoretical structures in our heads, and that structure needs to be uh, uh, examined whether it's true or not? Uh, and and uh, uh, use uh, structure. You you're aware of variables that it has to be. It is changing, and then uh, the various elements of the structure to change uh, uh, interrelate function. And if it doesn't work, what what you what you uh, you postulated, mm -hmm. then then uh, you uh, read what you you, you and, and this is a constant process. Yeah. Uh, uh, and mm -hmm. that's what life is all about. Yeah. And that we we recognizing various structures, mm -hmm. and then uh, try to see whether that, that structure is in fact and uh, how it is in, in, yes. in life. And, then, uh, and if it doesn't up, work, we structure then, differently. Because yeah. yeah. uh, when, we, when, we, when we talk about being creative, that's an example of structuring things differently. Yeah? When we are creative, we are structuring things differently. Yes. In, in, in being creative, and this is part of what I, those two things um, I have with these hangings. In 1976, I was invited to give a talk on creativity. And I was uh, working at the hospital at the time. And I was thinking about it, and these words just came out. In about half an hour, I couldn't write fast enough. And these words came out about creativity. So these are ways of structuring situations when we're being creative. We're looking at things from different points of view. We're listening from a different point of view. We're doing things from a different point of view. We're hearing things, understanding, interpreting from different points of view. And that's part of what we're talking about when I say we structure situations. Our opinion about something is an example of structuring. The ideas we have 
example of structuring, when we imagine we are structuring things in a certain way, okay? all these are examples of structuring, only that we don't call them structuring and we don't do it deliberately. And part of the tool that we're talking about here today is to be aware that we structure. It's not something that I'm saying you can now start doing in terms of structuring, but start recognizing that you do these things, that you already structure, you just don't call it that. When you start calling it that, it puts a different focus. So you're saying then that there's a, a real error in the kind of terminology you use? Yes, yes, the words make a difference. Look, again, going back to if we think and feel I left out, you can include in that. We are always leaving out something, eh? Remember your think, feel, attitude? Well, besides thinking and feeling, you can put talk in. We, when we think and feel a certain way, we will talk a certain way. And if we talk a certain way, we will feel and think a certain way. It's all interrelated. So feel, think, talk, attitude, behavior, they go together. So what you're saying basically is you can talk yourself into failure, but you can also talk yourself into success. Yeah. Yeah. Change your talk. Yeah. And talking, again, is a way of structuring the situation. When we talk about the situation in a different way, then we are structuring the situation differently. But if I, if I picked up on your term when you said, out of the ways of thinking, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. are you basically saying that there are our ways of thinking and new ways of thinking? Yeah. And what we're trying to do mm -hmm. is to drop a number of our ways of thinking and take on more new ways. Have an alternative. We, we can't completely... You see, this is so pervasive. This impact is so pervasive that we will, I'll say, never lose all of this. I've been studying general semantics and practicing as much as I can for the past 50 years, but I still indulge in some of this. Often. Yeah. Yeah. But we can learn to, in a sense, modify more of them. As Vanessa was asking me during the break, do we lose our spontaneity by this scientific mathematical approach to things? And I mentioned to her that we've been, I've been doing this for 50 years and I don't think of myself as an unspontaneous person. I modify what I'm spontaneous about. So it's a, matter of, it's a matter of modulating, modifying what we do. Does it make us less spontaneous? Just make us more spontaneous in applying modification. Let that twist. We can be more spontaneous both in being spontaneous and in not being spontaneous. There's no end to being spontaneous. It's just matter of what are we spontaneous about? Now, it would be fair to say you've got all these various strands of thinking, mm -hmm. as you say, but ultimately, wouldn't they come down to two forms, whether that's inductive or deductive thinking? Or is that not a correct statement? Um, that would be more restrictive. And for me, that is simpler. Because I'm talking about something that we can do. We can think in terms of variables. We can think in terms of structuring. We can think in terms of function. And inductive, inductive thinking and deductive thinking is involved there. But I find it, let's call it, a more productive tool for me to think in these terms. Because uh, you'll find that um, when you start to study inductive and deductive thinking, after a while you find that there's some overlaps. And then you have people arguing whether it's deductive or inductive. And um, for me, that's mind games, which is not bad. But in terms of being productive, I prefer this. And that's one of the things I found about general semantics, is that it's very simple for me in terms of the tools that it offers us. Yeah? 
So let's go back to this, these key terms and go with self-awareness. Your group of threes again, and this time you're invited to, I'm inviting you to talk a little bit about yourself. What do you know about yourself? I mentioned that since your success in anything that you decide to do will be a function of what you bring to the situation. Right? What you bring to the situation. What do you know about yourself? Right? How are you stepping on your own toes? What kind of holes you're digging for yourself? Yeah? But if you don't know yourself enough, you can't know that you're doing that. It would be easy to blame other people and other situations and don't recognize that you are doing that. Yeah? I remember, I'll give you a little experience I had in terms of many times not understanding ourselves. I went to a meeting in Montreal some years ago. In that meeting, we had librarians, medical record librarians. And there was this one lady, it doesn't matter what anybody said, she would respond at length. <laughs> when the meeting was finished and we were walking out, my ears always tuned in with what's going on. I hear her saying to somebody, these meetings last so long. <laughs> <laughs> so she didn't recognize how much, I am assuming this, she didn't recognize how much she contributed to the length of the meeting. So many times we don't recognize how much we contribute to whatever goes on that we don't like, that is not satisfactory, that disappoints us. Many times we contribute and we don't recognize this because we're not aware of ourselves. So the experiment now in your groups again, the experiment is to talk a little bit about yourself. What do you understand about yourself? What do you know about yourself? Things you believe in, things you value, things that are important to you, things you don't like, that kind of a thing. Because these will be variables in terms of your achievements. How long do we have for this? Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah that's, that's important. That's, that's, that's important. So, so think of the more significant variables. For instance, if we go back to the equation, y equals 3x, and x is just 0 0.000001, then y won't change much, okay? So think of the significant variables in terms of yourself. Good. Um, let's say each person takes um, two minutes, each person. Two minutes. presentation today. Okay? <laughs> Andrew asked me what this was about. I just briefly explained it to him. And he courageously said he would be able to explain it to you. So <laughs> let's go. Okay, we start off with Microscopic is what we can't see with our eyes but can see with a microscope. Submicroscopic is what we can't see with our eyes or a microscope. We got inference, which is the first thing we think about the thing we see. And inference is the second thing we think. Label, what we call it, and descriptions, 
descriptive level is how we um, describe it. So, now, would you, would you like to elaborate on the, um, um, the important thing to remember? Inference is not the descriptive level and vice versa. So. And the label and the thing, important thing to remember? So if you get the things crossed and you say something that looks like a woman, you say this is a woman, you couldn't be girl. Do we have a writing here? <laughs> 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 sensitivity to the structures that you're in. Okay? Two main structures that we need to be aware of are ourselves and our environments, what we're operating in. We pay a lot of attention, or let's say we pay more attention to our environments than we pay to ourselves. And we bring ourselves to uh, the situations and what we bring to a great extent will determine the measure of success that we experience. So we need to be aware of what we bring. Okay? Now we mainly bring, oh by the way I should mention this, um, during the lunch break, I, um, this is how war starts sometimes, eh? <laughs> we have a group over there which came in and I assume they saw that something was going on here, and they took away our chalkboard. Oh. They took what? Took away the, the whiteboard. Yeah. They, this is not the whiteboard. This is not the same whiteboard. <laughs> no. <laughs> they took it away. So I went around searching around upstairs and found another one, and Tom and me brought it down here. Right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so one of the things we bring to our situations, as I mentioned, is certain old ways of thinking about things. And these old ways of thinking about things doesn't always work for us. And general semantics presents us with an alternative. Okay. So if we, well, let me put it down away. They took our rubber suit. They took the other board. Don't worry, we'll go and get it back. Things change, right? Eh? So we need to remember that things change. The universe changes and in our movement, in our path towards whatever we want to achieve, we have to remember that things change. It's very important and we have to learn how to manage change. I could have gone over there and make a big fuss with them. I looked around and found them on a chalkboard and they don't even know what's going on. So there are ways to manage situations that come up and if you look at this here, it says in intelligence, a measure of one's ability to cope with new and trying situations. And often we don't use our intelligence as intelligently as we could. Right? We are all intelligent to varying degrees and general semantics is a way that we can use our intelligence more intelligently. Right? So, if we, if we have, if we are constantly bombarded by what I call icons, instances of conditioning, instances of conditioning from birth, 
they are bombarded. Eh? And now they've heard a little, just a little bit about general semantics, and now you have to incorporate it inside so that you can think and behave differently. But it takes time, lots of time, since this is constantly operating. Eh? This is constantly operating in us. And to work this general semantics, this is constantly clashing. So it takes time and it takes effort. You have to be patient with ourselves. If you think of the 31 million seconds in a year, and think of your age, and multiply that by 31 million seconds. And imagine that every second that you have lived, you have been bombarded with these messages from the culture. Then you get an idea of how much we have to work against to think differently. Right? This is constantly there operating in us. So on the weekend, you will get a better feel, I think, of what I mean by the instances of conditioning. Would but it's just a label. The idea is important. Would you say um, um, that uh, what general semantic does is to... Oh, 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 hold on, it doesn't do it. So well, we use general semantics by evaluating these forces and, uh, and uh, um, evaluating to, to what degree they are, they are significant or not yeah. significant mm -hmm. yeah. for us. So general semantics offers us and when I say offer, I just put that in quotes. The words are there, we read the words, we interpret them, and we understand them in particular ways. And we can use these principles as a way of structuring our experience. And the basic principles involve non-allness, non-identity, Elementalism, non-elementalism, and many others. Non-allness simply states that we don't know all about anything. We cannot say all about anything. We cannot think all about anything. Hence, there's always a, a level of uncertainty in our um, next level of otherwise. Yeah, we have to keep that constantly. Non-identity. No two things are the same. No two individuals. No two things are the same. If you have two things, they cannot be the same. They cannot be the same for the simple reason that if you can notice that there are two, then there must be some way that you can distinguish one from the other. To say that here's this one and here's the other one. So if it's two, if you say there are two things, they can't be the same. If they're in two different places, then you could say this is to the right of this. Right? This is to the left of that. And just that is enough to make a difference. Because if, if the tiger is coming and you happen to be standing here, right? then the tiger is going to attack you first. Makes a difference. <laughs> the order makes a difference. You're here, somebody else is there, and you are on this side closer to the tiger. It's not the same thing as this person who is further from the tiger. It makes a difference. So two things cannot be the same. Non-elementalism, has to do with not separating in the way of we think about things, things that in real life are not separate. As you mentioned, variable and functions. When we start to talk about them, we have the word variable and we have the word function. But in life situations, variables and functions, when we start to look at actual operations, are intermeshed. They're not separate. And that's part of our problem with language, in that we have words which are distinct. We have the word variable here, and we have the word function here, and we have the word structure. 
and it would seem like we're talking about different things. Eh? But in life, variable function structure, we're talking about one word, one situation, and we can structure it in terms of variable structure and functions. Get what I'm driving at? The language, the way we use language, we tend to believe that things are as separate as the words. So we have mind and body, eh? intellect and emotion. Well, if you remember to talk about thinking and feeling, they go together, although we have two different words, thinking and we have the word feeling. But if you think about something, you have a certain feeling about thinking, about how you think about it. And if you feel a certain way, you will think a certain way. So they go together. But we have two different words. So non-elementalism has to do with recognizing that the world is not as split up as we think. Eh? If you look around, we have a table here, but the table is resting on the floor. Eh? The table is in this room. So everything is in relationships, but we tend to think of things as distinct. So it's important as a tool to remember these basic things, non-honest, non-identity. So for instance, you, you make a plan, and you will not include all your, in your plans everything that is possible to include. Right? <clears throat> in the Astronauts going to the moon or wherever they go, they have what they call mid-course correction. Mid-course correction. <coughs> and that's to take advantage, take advantage of the fact that there may have been something missed in their plans. And so midway, they will check and see what they might need to change or modify. In non-identity, not to identify your plan with what is going on. The plan is one thing, and you're planning to achieve something, and the plan and the achievement are two different things. So don't identify them that if you plan it this way, it will work that way. By not, but if you don't um, make it recognize that the plan, what's going on is different, then there will be a tendency to uh, what I mentioned earlier on to clutch your ideas, clutch your plan so so severely that it's hard to let go and change and be more creative and make adjustments to be more flexible because we, we, you think the plan it must work this way, it should work this way. An example of um, planning um, what's going on. Think of um, communist, communism in Russia when it was going on. <clears throat> Think of the political system there as a plan of how the society should work. It's not working that way for some people. They try to leave, and what happens? They shoot them down. They build walls. So it's not appreciating the difference between that political plan and what's going on. Here's another important principle to remember, and let's call it two value thinking. What do you suggest us to, to uh, get away from, uh, to, to remedy this situation? Uh, what should we do? If, if uh, you know, if uh, you, you try to think about something and uh, two things that are pretty similar, mm -hmm. um, 
you know, how do you get away from this? You can simply talk to yourself. Mm -hmm. This is not all there is. Mm -hmm. I just look at it again and again and yeah. again and see what we'll see what's what's wrong. What's the difference? And again, if with more time, we would, we would do some experiments to illustrate that. Because anything I'm telling you, anything I'm sharing with you, I can develop an exercise, and I have developed exercises to illustrate that. Yeah? But we don't have the time today, so part of your job is to develop the exercises to illustrate these ideas. Okay? Uh, 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 your, your example before about the tiger and, uh, and yeah. the two mm -hmm. guys mm -hmm. standing mm -hmm. uh, beside each other, or, or actually in line with the tiger. Mm -hmm. So the tiger is coming and the first guy is a general semanticist and the yeah. second one isn't. Yeah. As it, does general semantics <laughs> give us any guidance what, how to behave in a situation like that? Yeah, sit down and teach the other. You can, you, you can yeah. use, yeah. remember, general semantics is about applying the methods of science to everyday situations. This might not be an everyday situation, but it applies to this too. <coughs> Scientific method has to do with awareness, what's going on, experimentation, prediction, and so on. Well, you can predict that if you're here, and a tiger is here, that it's very unlikely that the tiger is going to say, well, this one doesn't look so nice. I'll try this one. You can predict the great degree of certainty that the tiger will attack you first. Right? So you get out of the way. Right? You may try and position yourself there. <laughs> okay? General semantics, again, going back to connection between general semantics and science, a certain degree of awareness, sensitivity to our environment, sensitivity to the structures that we are in. So if, you're, if you, as a, as a person who has been practicing general semantics, you become more aware of the structures that you're in. Okay? If you just stop for a while and just listen, see what sounds, see what sounds you can hear. Okay? And just look around the room and see what you see. And just um, slowly rub your hands against your, your material and feel what you feel. And one of the things um, that I remember from here is the, the nice smells that I, I smell. I don't know what smell it is, but there's a scent there that can you, have you experienced that? Right. You see, when we're in a situation, we tend not to be aware of it. But there's a scent there, and I don't know if it's eucalyptus or what tree, but there's a scent that I smell when I go out there. Okay? So, it's important that we become more sensitive to the structures that we're operating in, since if we're going to be successful, we need to be aware of these structures and how to cope with them. Okay? Uh, okay. Uh, say, say you got behind the other guy, so mm -hmm. you're here. You're, uh, you're safe for the moment. Mm -hmm. um, uh, can you? Uh, uh, what about the morality of it? Uh, what, what about the uh, the other aspect of humanity? Am I am I uh, taking advantage of, of another person's uh, ignorance or, or? Well, you could tell him that you're you're there's a tiger coming, and you know he may not you're believe first. you. He might not believe you, but at least you could tell him before you start running. <laughs> if you yeah. feel like being um, courageous and say, okay, eat me first, then that's fine. You know, it's up to you. Or, or yeah. you team up with the other person and two of you might be able to take on the time. Yes. You see? Yeah. But if you don't have any time for all that, they can just yell, tiger, right? You get out of the way. Okay? So, with, with using general semantics, we can become more sensitive to our environments, 
and our cells. Um, it's governed. I have a videotape. Yeah, you ready? I have a videotape, uh, just a nine minute film, which I would like you to see. And I would like you to think of it in watching it. Structure, structure in terms of variables, functions, goals, objectives, experimentation, anything that you can see there, okay? So now, in your group of threes again, we can learn, we can learn from anything and from anybody, from any situation. You, many times you've heard somebody say, well, oh, this has nothing to do with that. Not true. It takes a matter of ingenuity to find out how one thing is related to another. So, to repeat, we can learn from anything and from anybody. So, in terms of what you decide you want to be successful at, how would you relate what went on there to your efforts to be successful? What did you see going on there? How would you structure that in terms of planning, experimentation, and so on? Understand? So, in your groups again, discuss this. Um, and I'll just tell you a short, quick story. A few evenings ago, I was with a friend. And he was telling me about some problems he had. And then, in the course of the discussion, he, had a, he was sharing a fantasy with me. And in that fantasy, he included me in the fantasy. Eh? and had me doing some things which I didn't like. So I said, no, I'm not going to do that. I said, oh, 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 it's my fantasy, and you have to do, you have no say. That was his exact words. It's my fantasy, and you have no say. Now, how many times in life we're trying to achieve certain things, we have certain goals, and we treat the situation and we treat people as if they were in our fantasy and had no say. Mm. You can think of that. He was treating the chair as if it was part of his fantasy and the chair had no say. Many times in our personal relationships we treat another as if they were part of our fantasy and had no say. If we want to achieve certain things, then we have to remember that other people, other situations, have a tremendous amount of things to say, and we better listen. Plus one danger that man had was this culturally expected ways of thinking with using the chair, yeah. was to use it as an object and dust off. Yeah, yeah. So we tend to, to deal in, with situations like that. Just okay. no, no, nothing to say. You're in my fantasy, you have nothing to say. Okay? So if you can quickly, I'm go around, going around the room quickly, just one word or one sentence, what stood out for you today? It may be something different you'll say tomorrow, but right now, what stood out for you? To, to something be different to your expectation. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, a teacher or a person's attitude, mm -hmm. patients can have a great effect on a pupil mm -hmm. to change, to realize mm -hmm. a truth. That mm -hmm. Tolerant of oneself and of the world around us. Yeah. Tolerance, mm -hmm. oneself and what's happening around us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it will come, okay. By the time you hear some more, it will come. I understand we don't finish before 30. It could be out before 30. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Self awareness and of other people around you, of their, you know, your expectations and that much you. There's a need to sort out how to get on with the chair. <laughs> <laughs> Determination. Well, say it again, please. Determination. Determination, yeah. Uh, the way 
some uh, situation can be a success or failure depending on how you look at it. And if mm -hmm. you feel it's a failure, yeah. if you concentrate on your facts and everything, you can right. see the variables and find it's success yes. after yes. all. And I'd like you to, if you can, use the, the terms variables, structures, function. The more you use it, the more you start to see that they are powerful words and ideas. Okay. The use of the words, as, as you were saying, the terms, just to be self-aware and mm -hmm. considering the variables. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, just uh, taking a problem and uh, trying to analyse mm -hmm. it in these terms is a mm -hmm. value concept, yeah. I watch out for structuring reality in terms of the variables of my fantasies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I've got a better understanding of uh, moving away from expected ways of mm -hmm. uh, thinking and starting to look at reality and work out what variables are there that I control or have influence over mm -hmm. that can lead to uh, improving my success mm -hmm. by looking at the functions of uh, how these verbals that I have some control over might then affect uh, the other things that I don't have uh, control over in terms of influencing it to hence change that structure to the, to the way I, I would like it to, to be. And that got emphasised with the, uh, the, the chair in terms of the, uh, the interactions between the, the man and the chair. Um, well, one of the things I got out of it was that um, our environment is constantly changing and we need to be sensitive to, to those changes and until we are sensitive to those changes we can't be truly successful. I'd like to, I'd like to restructure more uh, many of the unworkable old structures and functions and uh, reassess the variables. So, the assumptions or thought processes that we bring to a situation will determine its success. Mm. Imagine that somebody from another planet come and is asking you about yourself. Tell them about yourself, what kind of a person you are. So you can imagine that, and it's something um, that you may find interesting to do, because as I mentioned before, we bring ourselves to situations, and if we're not aware of what we are bringing, then our chances of success might be minimized. When we are aware of what we are bringing, then we can get a feel of how much we are contributing to our degree of success or degree of failure. We contribute. Many times we complain and we whine and we cry and we do all kinds of things, forgetting to ask, how did I contribute? Patients in psych wards are bad evaluators. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. I thought there was a lot in that. I thought the, came to realise better the importance of both self-knowledge and self-awareness. Um, probably just the, the reason why we are part of the maps that we make mm -hmm. is by the, by the uh, interaction of the, uh, the variables and the functions. Mm -hmm. Um, I figured out what that chart was. <laughs> and you feel good about that. Good. <laughs> you realise that the club food Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realise maybe other people might be treating you like yeah. their yeah. and not to be too offended by yeah. people expecting you to live up to yeah. what they expect. Yeah. Because if, yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that some others treat us as if they were in our fantasy. We treat people as if they were in our fantasy and had nothing to say, and others treat us like that too. And if you can remember that, then we take it less personally. And if you can keep this in mind, if you know better, you do better. Or we expect others to do better. And then we don't ask ourselves if we could do better. Uh, the truth, as, as we know it, is highly personal. Mm -hmm. My truth is a little bit different than somebody else's truth. Mm -hmm. right. And, and, uh, and uh, you can't force it, or you can't imagine that someone else would have the same idea that you have. Yeah. It's very tough, and that's one of the reasons why we have laws and policies and rules and regulations. As human beings, we are very creative and we would like to do what we feel like doing and how we feel like doing. 
And if you feel like driving along on any side of the road you feel like, then we're going to have accidents. We have to recognize the structure of the society in terms of the transportation regulations and so on. It applies to, if we want to achieve a certain measure of success, we have to recognize that there are structures there that we have to deal with. And there are structures here that we have to recognize so that the two structures can resonate, harmonize. Hmm?